Welcome to Sentient Sonic Machines. Today I'm going to show you how to make patch cables using square plug SP400 plugs. You can add a woven plastic sleeve to your cables to further protect them and keep them color coded, but it does add some rigidity to the cable and a lot of extra steps. So for today, we're just going to go without that. Here you can see the SP400 plug. These are very slim pancake plugs that come in black or nickel finish. The SP500 is the same casing size, but uses a larger cable. As for the cable itself, I prefer to use the Bestronic CA0678. Some people use Canary or Megami cable, but I prefer this for the braided shielding and the lower capacitance. As you can see, I've already unassembled one of the square plugs. On the inside, you have two tabs. The tip is the larger tab on the right, and the sleeve is the smaller on the left. I've already done one side of this cable. If you do everything right during your soldering, you'll have excellent strain relief and a very solid, long-lasting quiet cable for your pedal board. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is strip the outer sleeving. About half an inch is perfect for making square plug patch cables. We're going to use my favorite pocket knife for this, but any sharp knife will do. Just to show you how much sleeving you'll need to strip, here it is against the inside of the square plug. You want the narrow part of the plug to be fully secured around the wire, so don't strip it too far down. Put the cable against a flat surface and gently apply pressure with the blade. Roll the cable under the blade until you've gone all the way around. So as you can see, now the braided shield is exposed and the outer sleeve can just be pulled off. So here's the braided shielding. Mugabe and Canary cables do not have braided shielding. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen it. Uh, this stuff is honestly a pain to unbraid. You're going to want something sharp, pointy, and small. I usually use an owl or a small pick, but those have grown legs and I'm going to use this very tiny screwdriver. We're going to use this to separate the braided strands so that we can use the shield as a ground on the sleeve tab. Make your way around the braided cable, carefully picking it apart. Don't rip through the wiring, although it is okay if you lose a couple here and there. If you're shedding a lot of copper wire, you may want to back up and try again, as you likely pushed too hard with the knife while you were cutting. If there's a better way to do this, I'm all ears. This is how I was taught when I was an intern at a pro audio company, repairing and making instrument and mic cables in the back of house. So I've just always done braided shielding this way. It does take quite a long time though, so I am going to cut forward just a bit. Okay, so now you can see where this is going. You want all of these strands to be well separated. We're going to combine all of them together again to make a ground wire. Pull all of them in one direction and flatten them out. Be careful not to pull too hard, as you might pull the shielding through the outer casing. So once we have these nice and flat, this is what I prefer to do. The sleeve connector is very tiny, and it can be difficult to get a thick piece of ground wire inside of it. I take a pair of scissors and I cut the shielding at an angle. This makes the end thin enough to get it through the sleeve hole. Then we're going to twist the wires together. Use a lot of force to get them as tight and compact as possible. I also like to clean up around the center wire and push the shielding down a little. So there we have our ground wire for the braided shielding. Next we get to the inner wire. This BTPA cable actually has an additional sleeve, this very thin woven black plastic. I like to strip most of this down, but I leave a little bit to isolate the tip connection. Do not strip this conductive shielding past the shielding wire. Take my knife and like peeling an apple, very gently slice some of it off and then unwrap the rest. You can see here, I left a fairly generous amount on here. So the next thing we need to do is strip the white casing off of the inner conductor wire. I use wire strippers for this part. And I'm gonna take off about half a centimeter. So here's the conductor wire. We're also gonna twist this together. This makes tinning the wire much easier in a second. So before we get to tinning, I'm going to double check the fit against the square plug. So we want the outer sleeving to be snug inside the jack and with enough length on the conductor and the shield to reach the solder lugs. So this is looking pretty much perfect. Make sure to tin your wires. This makes soldering much easier and also makes for a better connection. I use my helping hands for this. Turn on my soldering fan. Make sure the tip of my iron is clean. Very clean. Very, very clean. So tin the tip of the iron. Just put a blob on there. 
And then starting from the top of the wire, we're gonna touch the iron tip and the solder to opposite ends, working our way down quickly. This should flow the solder. And we're gonna repeat this for the grounding wire. Make sure that's nice and evened out. So here are the tinned wires. You can see I did not tin the entire grounding wire, but maybe the first third of it. Uh, this is because tinning makes it very rigid and we still need some flexibility. So now it's time to put the cable into the square plug jack. Your conductor wire, which is the smaller one, is going on the tip tab on the right. Uh, the ground goes to the shield on the left. On these square plugs, I like to use my flathead to pry up the tabs to almost a 90 degree angle. So these are designed for this, so don't worry about them snapping on you. This makes soldering the wires much easier. So here's those tabs pulled up. The sleeve solder lug is very hard to get to. Um, as you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna still struggle with it. So I like to get as far away from the cable housing as I can using these pliers. So now we're ready to get the wires into the solder lugs. The conductor goes to the tip, ground goes to the sleeve, right and left. This can take some fiddling. I like to come in from the outside with the conductor wire so make sure both wires go all the way through the solder lugs. Don't worry that things are a little crooked at this point. We are going to fix that. So here I'm going to use the needle nose pliers to pull the ground wire to the side a little bit, just to make my life easier in a second. I'm going to use my helping hands to hold everything together. This is nearly impossible without them. Sometimes it takes a couple tries. Nobody's perfect. Just like tinning the wires, make sure the iron tip is clean. Tin the tip. And coming from the underside of the solder lug, hold the iron against it. And the solder against the other side of the lug. It should heat up the lug and the solder on the conductor wire, flowing the solder very nicely to make a secure connection. We're gonna repeat this for the sleeve lug, although I always struggle with the angle on this one a bit, even after pulling the tab up. So when soldering, a clean tip makes your job easier, so clean and retin often. I have a hard time seeing the sleeve solder lug sometimes because of the angle and the shadows. So just be patient and don't burn the paper cover, don't burn yourself. Um, try to stay away from the housing as well. So now both my conductor and my ground are soldered, but we need to take care of these tabs sticking up or we won't be able to properly close up the housing. So this is the perfect opportunity to really make sure everything inside the housing looks nice and isn't touching anything that could short. Be aware that these plugs do get hot, so maybe wait to handle them longer than I did. I normally use lead snips for this, but mine have also grown legs and disappeared since this morning, so I'm using scissors. This is kind of a cardinal sin, but I'm working with what I've got. Make sure to cut as close as you can to the lugs, especially on the sleeve side because it can short itself if there's something sticking out. We're gonna use our pliers again to press the solder lug tabs down. It's looking pretty good, but I just wanna make sure that the grounding wire doesn't have any strays and isn't touching anything. I can also pull the cable to just be a little bit more centered in the jack opening. So I'm going to use this little flathead again to kind of prod and poke that wire into a nicer shape and make sure that no stray wires are touching. You can also go in and tin the rest of the wire if you want. I usually don't just to have the extra strain relief. So after that, I'm going to put the paper sleeving down and give it a nice clamp with the pliers again. And we're in the home stretch. We just need to put the rest of the plug housing on. So make sure to hold down the paper shielding while you're putting the housing on. So I like to put in one screw, but not all the way. Um, this evenly distributes the force and make sure that your housing isn't wonky and lopsided. 
uh, which it can be if you screw in one side all the way down before the other one. So screw it in, not all the way, and then we're going to put in the other screw. Make sure everything is nice and tight, but don't over tighten or you can strip the screws out. And there we have it. One finished low profile square plug cable. Note that you can orient the plugs in different directions depending on your pedal board needs. Uh, these are actually pointing in opposite directions if this was laid flat. Um, is that made for the best strain relief on the cable when I was running it between the pedals I made it for? And that's that. So keep posted for more helpful videos on pedals, pedal boards, and gear. Thanks for watching.